Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this super simple quick tutorial on how to Florida weave your tomatoes. The Florida weave is by far the cheapest and most effective way of trellising your tomatoes if you've got a lot of them. If you only have a few, I would, I mean you could still use this method but it's really not as it's, it's basically just a wash once it comes to a cost because some of the materials you're going to need are a little bit on the expensive side, but once you stretch them across a large bed like this or a, over a huge row, you've got a lot of tomatoes that you're covering for basically the $3 each for the, the heavy duty tea post, which we'll get into. So it is by far for a lot of tomatoes, the cheapest and most effective way. Also what it's very good at is allowing airflow. One of the things that I don't like about tomato cages is oftentimes people say, oh, it's so nice to have these, these nice round tomato cages. And I agree, I love them for individual tomato plants. However, I found that the reason why they got blight so fast is because they don't allow airflow to come up. The leaves basically go straight up and it creates a wall where airflow can't come in. And anyone who's grown tomatoes before knows that tomatoes are extremely susceptible to blight. And one of the biggest things that you can do to combat blight is have good airflow. And the Florida weave allows that. It's just a small twine that you run along your lines that holds the tomato up on both sides and you just progressively uh, run them up the lines. And what that will do is it will allow lots of airflow because the leaves are not, they're not, uh, the leaves aren't being bent up or down. They're actually allowed to just go natural and the airflow can come right through there. So you'll find that there's a lot less blight, there's a lot less powdery mildew, and it's going to hold up the tomatoes just the same. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is get into the materials. You're going to need, like I said, T-posts. I've already put in all the T-posts, but you're going to want the heavy duty kind. They're about 350 at uh, Tractor Supply. I got five foot T-posts, six foot would be ideal. They're a little bit more, I think they're about four bucks a piece but you want the heavy duty green and white topped T-posts. The reason why is because you've got a lot of tomatoes here and in this 12 foot stretch, you're, you got about, I think nine plants, eight, nine plants. And when they get fully loaded with tomatoes, that is a lot of weight, believe it or not, when the, you got probably, I mean, hundreds of tomatoes. Um, you do not want to go with the dinky T-posts I went with the dinky T posts a few years back and we've actually got video footage of it. They actually bent the T posts, believe it or not. And then they were all hanging on the ground, which completely defeated the purpose. So we invested the money in the T posts and it was a great idea. So you're going to want to do that initially. The next thing you're going to want to get is some nylon balers twine uh, or ba uh, nylon baler rope, whatever you want to call it, rope twine. Uh, I call it balers twine. I think that's actually the real term. It's nylon though, and you need the nylon uh, twine because it will not absorb water, it will not sag, and it will not break. The problem with going with a natural twine is yes you can, but be forewarned that I tried it uh, the first year and the weight of the tomatoes, just like it did on the post, it actually, once the, the twine got, uh, got into the sun for a little while, it got weathered, it absorbed the water, it sagged, the tomatoes were on the ground, and then they snapped. Uh, not the tomatoes, but the, the twine, which again, defeats the total purpose. And once they get so big and so heavy, it's impossible to stake them back up. There's just nothing you can do. So it's best to just get this now uh, and you're going to be able to reuse it from year to year if you cut it right. Yeah, if you cut it right where you tie it off at the T-post, you can actually reuse it. Just coil it up like this. And believe it or not, we used this last year. So it, uh, it's very effective, it's very cheap. And uh, I actually got from Tractor Supply, again, you know, I'm not being sponsored by Tractor Supply, I just love going there because they got great prices uh, for people that like to grow big. Uh, <laughs> I think I got like 5,000 or 10,000 feet for 30 bucks. It was an unbelievably good deal. And it's gonna last you, I mean, good heavens. I mean, I, I use, uh, like there's basically uh, 24 feet on each row. So 24 times three, uh, is like 72 or yeah, 72. So there's like 72 feet in each row. Uh, well, these rows, at least yours might be a little bit different, but 72 feet of this. So it's going to last you a lifetime, one roll of it. Um, and you can just cut off what you need. And the very last thing that I was going to mention is if you are doing it in rows, not raised bed, you can do it in raised beds like this, but if you're doing it in rows, make sure it's extremely important to space out your T-posts just like I have it here in the raised beds. There's no exception to the rule. 
it has to be every 10 feet or less. Less would be preferred, but you're going to still be fine with 10 feet. The reason why you don't want to go any further than 10 feet is again, that weight of those tomatoes bears down on those T-posts and even if you have big ones, it's going to bend them right in the ground and they're going to slant forward and your tomatoes in the center of the row will actually be on the ground by the end of the year. So you want to go about every 10 feet and that's going to make sure that you're going to support the weight adequately. So the first thing you're going to want to do is tie off about, uh, well you're going to want to measure your tomatoes, obviously these ones have needed it for a while, but we want to go about part way up the tomato plant for the first one. And so you want to let them grow a little bit before you do it, otherwise it's really not going to do anything. You want to just tie it off however you want to tie it. I typically do a couple different knots so that we can get a nice secure, uh, a nice secure start. And the first stretch is easy. We're just, going to, we're just going to bring it straight down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it straight down. And we're just going to pull it tight along this the back T post and you want to wrap it around just wrap it around once wrap it around twice you want to make sure you got a, a nice uh, snug nice snug taut rope too make sure you don't have any slack because slack basically defeats the purpose of doing this so you're going to wrap it around three times and you're going to bring it back okay now here's where it gets to be called the Florida weave all right so you want to go on either side of the tomato. So we're going to take this plant here and tuck it back under because in order to get the weave going, you've got to go on either side of the plant. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go on this side of the plant and always you always want to have it tight. So now you have it like that. And now this one is falling down, but we're going to go on this side of the plant and that's gonna hold it up just like that, and so on and so forth. You just wanna make sure that you have a, basically a weave in between the tomato plants, because that way when it's, when it's pulled tight, it's going to securely hold them. All right, and the very last step is just to pull it tight and make sure you've got no slack. Again, slack is your worst enemy when you're Florida weaving tomatoes. So pull it really tight, as tight as you can. And then you wanna go around, again, another three times. Get your tool that you're cho choosing to cut. All right, then we're just going to tie it off here so that we can secure everything that we've done. Because once it's tied, it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'll just do it a couple times to make sure that it's nice and tight. There. So there you all go. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you did not mind my neighbor who cannot stop mowing his lawn every two days. But uh, it just seems like whenever I come out to film, he has to make sure that he's mowing his lawn. But hey, it looks good but I'll tell you what, it's not growing any food. So stop mowing your lawn, dude. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just having fun today. It's a good day, it's a nice, beautiful day, and I hope you all enjoyed. So uh, again, let me know what type of method you're using to trellis your tomatoes. There's a lot of them out there, and pretty much all of them will do the job as long as your tomato's off the ground, and you get good airflow, and uh, that's it, really. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Grow big or go home. Bye.